Got another one I gotta fire up. Uh, this one is an Oshkosh uh, plow truck, meant for plowing things like airports and stuff like that. Now, the real nice thing about this is it's been repowered with a 6BT Cummins. Um, so that's nice. But it hasn't been running for many years. Uh, the starter was intermittent and then just stopped working. So that motor has been sitting for a long time, not turning over. Whole truck's been sitting. Uh, luckily it's a diesel. So like they oil themselves internally with the fuel being in oil. They really uh, don't get stuck as often. I better knock on wood on that one. So I'm hopefully the motor's not stuck. Hopefully it just spins over and we can just take care of the starter issue and get this one fired up. And over here, we have the battery box. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, we got a hold down. Let's get rid of that. Well, it looks like the whole thing just comes right off. All right, let's get this whole battery cover off of here. Oh, there's batteries in there. I already have a great feeling about this. We've got battery clamps that were meant for a round terminal, bolted through a flat terminal that's meant for a ring type terminal. Got one ring terminal, ring terminal going to a round terminal, and then um, another ring terminal, another round terminal. Uh, this, that, that's a power wire hooked right up to the positive side. Oh no, that's the negative. All right, so we're just gonna remove all this stuff. Went sorting through the old battery pile, I found two good sized group 31s that showed at least 11 volts on each one of them. So I uh, hooked them up in parallel, that should be fine. First thing I'm doing, I'm gonna look around for things that live here, because this cab door hasn't been opened in a long time. Um, but I don't think I see anything scurrying. I don't see anything flying. I don't see, oh, there's a hornet's nest. Uh, looks empty though. There's something in here. Let's just, let's just knock that out of the way. All right, now, no more nests in here. Uh, let's see. We have instructions for cold weather starting, but it's warm, so we're not gonna do that. All right, now, I've never used this before, so I don't know how to operate it. I see a battery cutoff switch here, so I'm assuming that needs to turn on. Um, that looks like plow controls. Appears to be a shifter. Uh, this says not for parking, so I'm guessing it's some kind of brake that you don't use for parking. Uh, maybe a transfer case. Yeah, all right, we got instructions on the door. We have a 1, 1, 2, 3, R, reverse. Not 100% sure about that pattern. That's a little bit of an odd pattern. Uh, it appears there's two reverses and two first gears. Uh, and then we have the transfer case. So uh, that's good. Um, differential locks. Uh, that could be handy. Let's see. Roto light, headlight, plow light, clearance lights, stop lights, headlights, heater. Actually, those look like indicators that when you switch it on, they turn on, maybe. Uh, we've got a full and uh let's see all right the voltmeter got a voltmeter and that's let's see I'll come in now all right there's a voltmeter there you can't really see it in the sunlight but it looks like we have voltage we have buttons um we have a buzzer um that is indicating low air pressure so we must have air brakes oh hey i like this one it is the speed racer function, which maybe is a button, maybe it's this, I don't know, but I like it. Uh, air brakes, yep, there's a parking brake thing. Okay, let's try this again. All right, key doesn't do anything. There's a button right next to it. Let's make sure. Looks like there's only one neutral, so that's good. All right, neutral. Nothing. Huh. 
All right. So, it looks like it is for a starter and it doesn't work, which corresponds to what I was told is that the starter doesn't work right. Now I watched the voltmeter. When I pressed the button, it dropped down, then a few seconds later popped back up. The last time I tried it, I pressed the button, it went down and stayed there. The voltage was like it was drawing a lot of juice, um, but it wasn't doing anything. So it looks like the starter is trying to operate, not actually operating, and possibly getting stuck in the trying to operate position. So I'm just taking that starter out. I don't want to cause a fire here. Got the starter out and the proper test equipment, a screwdriver. Yeah, we're getting nothing. Something's definitely wrong with that starter. Which means it comes apart now. I've got the solenoid off. I want to see if the motor works directly. Well, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Something's wrong with that motor. So now on this starter, this is the motor section. That's a gearbox. Um, could be bad bearings, could be bad brushes, could be bad bearings in the gearbox. So these two long bolts take off the end cap, take off everything. We're just going to start taking it apart until we find what doesn't work. It's one long bolt on either side, and that sandwiches the whole thing together. Now there should be brushes in here somewhere, so let's see if they go flying. There they are. Alright. Now I have a couple screws. They hold the brush retainer to this end cap. Let's pop those off. There we go. There's a retainer for the brushes. Now these brushes, they're all on springs, so if the brushes are worn out or the springs are stuck, they can just not touch and that would be a problem. But they actually look all, they're all moving freely and look okay. So I'm going to look into the bearings as an issue. Alright, now here is the whole brush assembly. Um, this is the windings that actually uh, create a magnetic field. And that all comes off as a unit. Now we have that bearing, seems okay. Alright, here we have the actual armature. It's got a bearing on either end, which both seem fine. I don't see anything really burnt or scraping here. The, let's see, it's a little dirty on all these contacts here. I can clean those up. Those usually aren't the problem, but uh, maybe. Now in here we have the gear drive. You can see that's where the there's a gear tooth on the end here that engages those gears and uh, that all spins free. So, uh, so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. I've got some 1200 grit sandpaper. You don't need this fine, it's just what I had. It's actually going to take a little longer. scotch Bright works, whatever. Rubbing in the dirt probably would work. There we go. A lot cleaner now. There's a lot of residue in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean up that inside a little bit. Maybe something's being shorted out. Uh, but I don't think that's too likely. Now I just blew this out with an air hose and most of the dust came out. It looks pretty decent. What I wanted to show you was this little pin. That's actually an indexing pin. There's a little hole in the casing. But as long as you get it lined up, it all just slides back together easy. Now brushes can be a pain. You've got four spring-loaded ones. They all are trying to compress together. Usually all I'll do is I'll push two of them, try to slide one side on first, and then get to the other side. Nope, oh, there's one. There's two. There's three. 
and there's the fourth one. Now we slide it on. Just be gentle and it'll work. I'm going to put these little screws in first in that brush holder. Then I can wiggle this around a little bit as a unit, get it in the right spot to get the long bolts in. Now that's what it's supposed to do. Well, while I've got it out, I'm going to check this solenoid to make sure those contacts look good. It took me a few minutes to figure out how to get this cap off. Um, I thought you could just unbolt it. But, these electro connectors are soldered on the outside. So you actually have to unsolder them first. Like here, you have to unsolder it, and then you take the cap off. So, uh, not the easiest thing to take apart, but it's a part. And I'm glad I did, because these contacts are pretty pitted. That one in there, that really needs a good cleaning. So, uh, that could have been causing a low voltage situation originally. Now this contact is crimped on. I don't have any way of reattaching that if I take it off. So I'm going to try to clean up this contact while it's inside here. I heard it started going out a little bit. It looks like this will work. This disc actually floats on here, so it's spinning while I'm uh, wire brushing it. So it's getting it all pretty evenly. Now these are a lot easier to get to. And I'm going to use a file to make sure they stay flat. Now that disc is going to hit both of these. That's what actually makes your contact. So as long as they're in line with each other, that disc will float and make good contact. That was probably the original problem. Now I've been filing for a while. You can see there's still a big groove there. That actually was real deep. So that was definitely a big problem. I'm still not even all the way cleaned up. You can see the pile of copper and what's on my hands. That's how much... That's not even all that I've taken off. That's just some of it. So this thing was really roasted. A lot more filing. I'm still not there. Uh, there's still a pit. These are definitely contacts that need to be replaced. So uh, I'm going to call it good enough and put it together and see if it works. I got to get these wires through the holes and solder them back up after I get it bolted together. Whoever designed this system, uh, they need to redesign it because both these connectors, when they have loose solder in there that you've already taken off and desoldered, it sort of sticks in there and it's hard to get the wires through. And you need to do both at once in order to get it straight down. I've been heating it to get one side to melt and tightening that bolt down a little bit to get the connector slid over. But I don't want to do it too much because I don't want to bend the cap. So then I have to switch to the other side and heat this one and go a little bit more on this other bolt and keep repeating till I get that cap all the way down. And then I've got to solder these connectors back together. So uh, definitely not a repair friendly system. But we'll get it. We're not giving up on this yet. Otherwise, we're going to have to spend money. You need a good solder iron for this. You've got to get a lot of heat into it. Those regular pencil ones, I don't think will ever do it. Now that looks like it'll do something. Could actually take a nap while working on this one. It's in. Now I gotta get out. Now that I actually think this is gonna start turning over, I'm gonna check the fluids. Um, yeah, hopefully it has some. Hmm. Radio looks dry, so that's not necessarily good. There's a dipstick behind the spider web, huh? Oh, that was really over full. Well, at least it has some. Let's see if it turns into a milkshake when I turn it over. Well, I guess that's all that really matters. Other than that, let's crank her over. Let's push the button and see what happens.
that part was almost too easy. Uh, I didn't want to leave it running too long because uh, I want to get some coolant in there, but looks like we got a runner. Got enough coolant in it to uh, see the level in the radiator. It's not up, but it's enough. And uh, now let's see if it'll move. Now the oil pressure came right up, uh, so at least that looks pretty reasonable. Air pressure started to build up. I don't know if the brakes are going to be stuck on, so we'll find that out. Um, and who knows what else will happen, but let's see if it'll move. It moved. I have an air pressure problem with the brakes. Let me show you. This line right here seems to leak a little bit. Go figure. But when it builds up pressure, I got it pouring out here. It gets real loud in here. So I got to fix that before I go any further. I had enough length. I was able to just shorten up the line and reconnect it. Hopefully that stays together. Let's see how it does.
brought my Grand Cherokee over here so you get a sense of scale. Average size 4x4, plus size 4x4. It's not a small truck. Especially not when you drive around in the woods. Okay, I may be feeling a little dumb here. I've been fighting the steering on this. It's the most miserably difficult steering I've ever seen. Uh, I got air on the tires so they weren't flat. This didn't get any better. Uh, and they just kept maneuvering it. And uh, I noticed every once in a while it was a little bit better. And then I realized, I saw this earlier on. There's a canister here labeled ATF. I didn't know what it was for because, you know, I figured, you know, it's not an automatic. What would you use it for? Didn't give it a second thought. I think that's uh, power steering and has a dipstick and it's not on the stick. So I'm going to add some ATF here where it says ATF and see if that fixes my steering issue. Yeah, it's got power steering now. I feel dumb, but at least I figured it out eventually. So this thing's a little tall. Normal vehicles actually fit through here pretty easy. Even the power steering fluid, still not good.
liking that truck. That thing's fun to drive. Now you may have noticed this plow is really jerky when I use it. Uh, the main reason is this truck has a huge hydraulic pump for a big cylinder. That cylinder is meant for a light duty truck, like a one ton. So uh, that's a little bitty plow cylinder for this thing. There's so much fluid volume, it moves really fast. Now the angle cylinders have the same problem. They're small too. It flips back and forth really fast if I can move the lever. The lever is stuck going slightly to the left. Um, and I haven't been able to move it. So I'm going to take off the plow for now since we don't need it anyway. And I don't want it constantly pressurizing one cylinder. And what I'm going to try to do is get a line that connects the two angle cylinder lines so fluid will constantly circulate through it. Hopefully as it warms up and circulates, that will actually run through the valve and free it up. Maybe. We'll see. Well, I got the plow off. So uh, now I can actually drive around without hitting things. Then I went and found some quick disconnects fittings in a bin and a hose that's way too long. Right here are the connectors for the angle plow. Basically one goes to each one-way cylinder, so it pressurizes to move that way and then acts as a return to go the other way when the other cylinder presses it. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to temper fluid from the one that's pumping out fluid back to the return and circulate it through the valve uh, with this hose. So at the least, we won't have the uh, whole system pressurizing on one circuit and not being able to flow at all. Um, I was originally thinking that this would help the fluid circulate through the valve and that, would, that might free it up. I don't think so now. Let me hook this up and I'll show you why. This part's easy. There we go. All right, so now we have a circuit where it'll flow through. Let me show you this hydraulic system. Now at the front of the vehicle here is a hydraulic pump. And that is driven directly off the motor. If you go in here in the engine compartment, you can see there's a shaft drive right off the crank pulley going forward to that pump. So uh, that's a nice direct drive system. Then the pump, basically, here's the intake, which apparently had a few leaks on it here and there. Um, I'm sure that works fine. And then it pumps out and then goes backwards. My experience with airport plow trucks is quite limited. I expected it to go back to a valve in the cab where the levers are. So here are the levers, but that's not a valve right there. Those are two push-pull cables. You can kind of see them in there. And those cables come back here and go, oh, there they are. They go right here to this valve block. So um, these aren't inside at all. They've been exposed to the weather. In my experience with push-pull cables, those are probably frozen. And that's probably the real issue. But here we have the valve. Yeah, we got main pressure coming in, then it goes out to all the various things, and then returns. And then it has this huge hydraulic tank with a temperature gauge, so you can see if your fluid temperature is getting high. I'm going to spray penetrating oil on where the, the shafts go in. Hopefully that might free it up. I'll spray penetrating oil on these. I expect it's a push-pull cable. It's the real problem. Then after the valve, we have the lines that go. You can see here all the steel lines. And those go back up front doo -doo 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 -doo, to here, where we have the angle and the uh, lift cylinder. So you have the fluid coming from the back of the truck, pumping through here, pumping to the back, coming back, and then returning back. So pretty much this fluid crisscrosses this truck a uh, number of times. And the valves aren't anywhere near where the controls are. Uh, seems more complicated than it needs to be, but it works. And they've been building a lot of these things, so they must have some good reason for it. Next, I'm going to have to put this thing to work. But uh, right now, I don't know if you could hear it, it's raining, and it's only going to get worse. So I'm calling it a day. I'll leave on a successful note of a truck that runs and drives and can do stuff. And uh, I'll go find something else to do that's indoors. But I uh, hope you guys are having fun, and I will keep having fun too. We'll see you next time. And eventually you'll see this thing do some work.